Have you ever discussed stuff like this before? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dad was a coach and Bechtov, one of the guys in the club, said to my dad, oh, John was, he was brilliant today. And he goes, I don't mind about him. He goes, wait, you see my second fella. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably just trying to motivate you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was, yeah, because it did. <laughs> what was your relationship like growing up? Competitive household? Oh yeah, absolutely. There was always that competitiveness and drive and uh, probably from all of us, but yeah, mainly. Jono. We used to play this game, rugby on knees. So you basically, like it was a, it was a small living room. The goal was you, you got the ball in the middle and you had to score a try on the other side, but you're on your knees. So like nearly impossible to score. So all you do is end up ripping the ball off each other or scrapping each Just other. Just wrestling, so which ended in a fight. It's a basically a wrestle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A fight with a rugby it's ball. A, it's a wrestle with a rugby ball, but you got to try if you scored at one side of the room. There was no try scored ever. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things I remember was uh, having a chat about rugby and him just saying, oh, one day I'd love to kick a drop kick to win the game in Twickenham. I probably didn't even know what Twickenham was at that stage. <laughs> I was probably visualizing taking kicks from 10, you know, 11 in Donnybrook. And at the time I was picturing taking a goal in the school senior cup uh, for Mary's or, you know, and then when I was Playing for Marys in the in the club game I was probably doing visualizing and doing it for Leinster. When I was doing it for Leinster, I was probably visualizing it for Ireland. And it's probably just that every like every kid. Like when you were younger, growing up, and you'd be doing solos in the back garden with a football, and you'd be like, oh, "I got four hundred and seventy six today. Going to get five hundred tomorrow." <laughs> That's good numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bro, exaggerated. Funny yeah. joke. Be four, <laughs> fourteen. <laughs> yeah. You had your own ambitions growing up as a rugby player. I would have loved to have played for Ireland or Leinster, but didn't materialise, so happy to, I suppose, get an opportunity to do it as a coach now. I broke my leg when I was 16 and uh, it wasn't the best injury. <laughs> it was horrific. <laughs> when you hear a bad leg break, you think, okay, being a cast and you're being, but then obviously in hospital for, how long in hospital? Six weeks? Yeah, four or five weeks, yeah. Yeah, like 16 to 18, 19, in rugby terms is like your window to get picked up by a <laughs> professional team, Leinster really like, and uh, he missed that window. And I've always been cognizant of the fact that like, that I'm so lucky to, to be doing what I'm doing like, and that is always reminded every time I see him, I'm going like, well, I was one injury away from never playing for Ireland or never playing for Leinster. Um, so it's amazing the, the things that can happen to you that can, you know, Mark hopefully will go on and have a great career in coaching though. When did you as a family start to realise what Johnny was capable of. Was there a game, was there a period where we thought, okay, he's not just one kid among many who want to be a player, he's got a chance? Well, probably from a young age, like senior cup when he kicked the drop kick to win Mary's the cup, even junior cup, you, you could tell. Maybe I might be a bit biased, but... <laughs> You're allowed. You're allowed. Your bias is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a role have your family had in helping you get to where you are? Loads, like without them even knowing how you're brought up. Like we were, we spent our childhood in a rugby club. Like, you know what I mean? Now that wasn't that wasn't to make you into an international or provincial player. It was just because that was their life, and so you're a product of that. Like how we were reared, like with values. Is that the right thing to do? Or um, if you're going to do something, do it properly. Like there, are sort of ways you could live your life for the rest of your life. And then obviously, true true later life, like being able to call your brothers or you know, have a talk to them about the game and get an honest feedback. You can see how much uh, it's meant to them to watch and how much it impacts their life. Like when we win and play well, they probably have a great weekend. When I don't, they probably have a crap weekend. Uh, so it's, you're, you're playing for them in, in many ways as well. Yeah, I often hear the phrase that families kind of ride the roller coaster with the athlete throughout their career. Is that what it's like? Are you as impacted by the good and bad days? Oh, yeah, absolutely. More so the losses. Really? <laughs> you probably take the losses worse than, than anything. Myself and my wife went to the last World Cup in Japan and we, we, sat, we went to watch uh, Jano kick the day before. They obviously lost to the All Blacks 
And I just the next day I was like, I'm going home, Dasha. <laughs> Dasha's my wife. She was expecting a two week holiday in Japan. I was like, I'm done. I'm going home. But we didn't go home. Thank you. I was going to say, hopefully. <laughs> we didn't go home, but that's that was kind of the feeling like. And when you hear him criticized, does that impact? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you read all of the stuff, you're you're gonna end up reading criticism as well as the praise. So if you take the praise, you have to take the criticism with it. So you just choose not to read anything anymore. But it, it does, it, it, has a, it has a big toll on you. In a stadium, you, you've bound to have memories of hearing moans and groans. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be a dirty look first. And then if it continued, there'd be a few, a few words thrown about. Would you? Would you? Would you? Uh, I probably used to do it more than now. My wife's beside me, calming me down these days. <laughs> <laughs> Like Mark said, like there's, there's criticism and praise. Often the praise is way over the top and often the criticism is way over the top. And you just got to try and ignore as much of it as on either side as you can and just look for the truth. That must take practice though. When you have so much like written over the years, like you kind of just like, it's kind of, it's just become normal now. I can't affect it in any way. And that's, that's life. Are there any downsides to being Johnny Sexton's brother? No, not at all. It's been a... Uh unbelievable ride while it's lasted or still lasting. It's brilliant. I've never been negatively affected by it, apart from a few slaggings you get. But that's you, you give me worse slaggings than anyone ever gets. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a moment that sticks out in Johnny's career for you? Probably the 100 cap against Japan. I thought that was brilliant. When you scored the try and then the team jumped on you and you felt like the, the whole crowd was, was for it like a true appreciation for what he had done. The support you get from the people who you grew up with is, is phenomenal. It's still, still there to this day. What will he miss most as a family when he finishes up? Probably just the excitement of the games. Really? It's different. You get the same buzz when you're coaching because you're invested in it. So I think that's what I'll miss. Have you ever discussed stuff like this before? No. Is it the first time you're <laughs> hearing him? Yeah, we're still like children. Like So if he comes over for to watch a game or have a drink you know it'll be do that and then slag each other and then go and have a penalty shootout in the back garden <laughs> <laughs> same as when my other brother jerry comes home but it's just the way it's always been there's no special privileges by being ireland captain no it's worse no. they absolutely destroy me <laughs> everything i do any mistake i remember uh, last year we played new zealand in the third test and will jordan got a breakaway and i was the last man and he's like so fast and i am not fast and he literally got away from me and the, the lads were texting me after the game going, why did they make you wear flippers for the match today? Why, why, why was your cement in your boots chasing me <laughs> <well?" laughs>